What's up, five fans? Osmo and McCarty are back for another UFC event. We got a fight night coming up here, and this is Matt McCarty. Just in case you're wondering, we didn't have a, another beard bed or anything like that. He's uh... trying to get a job. <laughs> How's that going? So, so, so. I'm beardless. He, he's trying to take oh, Joe Rogan's place, and it's not going too well. So pray for him. He really could use your support. All right, let's talk about the first fight. This one's actually pretty interesting, and I know it's not going to be televised. But again, as a lot of you guys know, uh, Steve Cantwell lives in our town, and we know him. And we obviously just have to talk about his fights whenever he fights. We have a rubber match. And for you MMA fans that don't know what that means, I mean, these guys have fought before, twice, split. They each have a win. Now this is the third and deciding fight. What's going to happen? Big question. So Matt, Cantwell, Stan, these guys have fought before, both shared a little action in WEC. What's that going to translate to now? Uh, you know, Stan is training with Greg Jackson's camp, at least last fight he was. Um, basically, it's Cantwell's fight to lose. He can win it anywhere he wants to. I think Cantwell's going to try and prove that he is the better striker. I mean, that he's even a better striker than he was last time. I think Cantwell's really going to be looking for a knockout in this fight. I'm going to give it to him, and I'm going to give him the TKO uh, mid-second round. I think he's just more technical. He does hit hard. This is a bad night for Stan. All right, Jared. Agree? Disagree? I mean, you train with uh, Cantwell. He's taught you a few things. Yeah. You're obviously going to be a little biased in your pick, but uh, uh, well, be open-minded. What do you think? Well, I, I'm, I feel like I'm being open-minded. You know, in the second fight, Cantwell showed that he knew that a big right hand was coming. And really, I think that Stan relies on that a little bit too much. I think if it goes to the ground, Cantwell can submit him, and I think he probably will pick him apart on the feet. So I'm gonna say uh, third round TKO. TKO, nice. Yeah, I agree with both of you guys. You know, these guys have fought before, and in the first fight, Stan obviously kind of surprised Cantwell. I think it ended in the first round. Cantwell didn't really know what he was getting into. Their second fight, it really showed that Cantwell really improved his game. Stan kind of stayed around the same. And even yeah. when you said he was, he was training with Jacksons, his last fight in the UFC he did not look that good. So yeah. I really think Stan has kind of stayed in place in his game. And I just see Cantwell getting better and better. Even when he fought Louise Kane, he did lose that fight, but he looked really good. Nobody really gave Louise Kane that much push before. And, uh, you know, he lost the fight, obviously, but, you know, he definitely showed he has the marbles. In this one, I'm going to agree with you guys. I'm going to take Cantwell, submission, nice. second round. Next fight, we got Nate Quarry taking on Tim Crater. Both of these guys, very likable. You've seen them on Ultimate Fighter before. I like them both. I think what this boils down to, for me personally, in my opinion, is experience. Nate Quarry and Tim both have a lot of fights, but Nate Quarry's been fighting in the UFC for the last couple years, so he's been in the big show. He knows what it's like. Tim has put out a pretty good 3-0 record uh, since joining the UFC, so that is impressive, but they've kind of been against so-so yeah. guys. I don't, don't want to call them cans, but... Nate Corey is definitely a bump up in competition for Tim. His best bet, take it to the ground. Nate Corey is not great on the ground. He's usually more of a, a you know, striker type of guy. He's got the heavy hands. So if he wins, it's going to be TKO. If Tim wins, probably going to be a submission on the ground. But if my money's on the line, I'm going to go with Nate the Rock, Corey. Oh, nice. I say second round TKO. Matthew. I'm disagreeing with you. Ooh. I think I think Corey definitely has the heavier hands. But I think when it comes to technique and well-rounded striking, Crater's better. I think he's going to be able to pitter-patter at Quarry, dance around, maybe look for a knockout if he can get one, but I think he's going to be happy scoring points the whole fight, and I'm going to give it to Crater. Decision. Decision, okay. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I disagree with you, but you raise a good point, so I'm not going to give you too much garbage. Jared, what do you think? Well, I, I agree with Matt. I think that Crater has the better hands, maybe not as heavy, but he might uh, poke at him a little bit, and uh, I think Quarry might get a little bit frustrated, take it to the ground, and... Crater, most of his wins by submission. Yeah. So I'm going to say Thug Jitsu submission, <laughs> second round. <laughs> Next fight, we have the co main event. Should be main event. Yeah, it should be main event for sure. You got Roger Huerta, one of my favorite fighters, and Gray Maynard. Who Jared's met, I have to mention, and he asked me to do this every time. <laughs> Wonder who he's gonna pick. Okay, now again, there is a lot of nut hugging and favoritism on this show, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be realistic here. Roger Huerta, amazing fighter. I like him just because of his heart and just that he comes to put on a show every single time. But he has one very, very obvious weakness. He can be taken down fairly easily. If you watch a lot of his fights, you know, Florian, Guida, he gets taken down a lot. He does survive on the ground. Like, I think uh, Florian had him in a rear naked choke. He's able yeah. to weasel his way out. So he's got, 
good submission uh, defense, but when you get taken down with a wrestler like Gray Maynard, who's kind of known as a lay and pray type of guy, it just equals bad news. You know, you're not able to enforce your game plan when you're on your back, and yeah. Gray Maynard is going to do that. I know he's talking about you know putting on a show and getting noticed because a lot of people do kind of consider him like a blanket in these fights. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's always going to go back to that you know Randy Couture bread and butter. You know, clinch, take it down to the ground, beat him up down there. And I'm sorry, Roger, I love you. I hope you pull out some crazy flying knee or flash knockout. I'd love you even more. But I don't think it's going to happen in this one. Gray's going to take you down. He's going to beat up on you a little bit. You're going to survive, but you're going to lose each round one at a time. You're going to lose a decision. So Gray Maynard, decision for the win. What do you think? I'm agreeing with you completely. <laughs> nice. All right. Just, you know, Gray does have heavy hands, but it, it could be an awesome brawl on their feet. They have the potential to make this fight fight yeah. in the night. It could be a crazy fight. It's not going to go that way. No. If Gray starts to get caught, it's going to go, like you said, to the bread and butter, take it down, lay and pray, win a decision. That's why I'm going. It's a safe bet, you know, but it's not going to get you any more fans. There's a lot of people that don't like Gray Maynard. He's a nice guy. I mean, he inching trains. To inching towards a title shot, you know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he is getting the win, so you got to give him props there. So, Jared, you met the guy. Was he nice? Yeah, he was, he was a nice guy, you know, wrestler out it, of Vegas. So. Okay. Is he, is he really going to put together some, some things that we've never seen before? If you read a lot of interviews he's talking about who's going to show another side to him but is it really smart to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roger Huerta oh I think he just needs to test it out you know I think he has improved boxing uh, I think if they start brawling he might get scared and really if that happens he needs to go back to what he can do wrestle yeah fall back on that and take it down I think be it's a gonna bully ha I think it's gonna <laughs> happen yeah he's gonna wear him down and just bully him and lay on him so I gotta agree with you guys I'm gonna go decision Maynard And just like that, guys, it is time for the main event of the evening. You got Nate Diaz taking on Melvin Gillard. I really don't think this should be the main event. Co, maybe, but Huerta Maynard would have been a much more exciting fight to have in that limelight. This is the first time USC has been in Oklahoma City. Give the fans something amazing. Diaz and Gillard, I don't know, man. I think this fight is going to be over fairly quickly, and let me explain why. Diaz, obviously a jiu-jitsu guy. He's going for that quick submission. Gillard... Every fight I've, I've seen him in, man, he's just looking to knock your head off quickly. And against some chumps, he, he can win that way. But Diaz and his brother as well, they're, they're pretty crafty guys. They don't act like it. They talk kind of like, you know, <laughs> trailer trash. But believe it or not, there are, you know, they're survivors. These guys know how to brawl for sure. I know he's going to stay away from Gallard's power. He's going to catch him in a crazy moment, take him down. And once it's on the ground, man, Gallard just is out of his element. He really does not know what he's doing. Maybe something has changed. I mean... If he can't figure out how to survive on the ground when you're going up against a Diaz where you know you're going to get faced with submissions, I don't think there's any hope for the guy. I really don't. I'm really surprised that the UFC has even brought him back after the drug suspension. So that all being said, I'm going to take Diaz submission second round. I think uh, Gallardo will probably last for a little while, but Diaz is going to get eventually catch him doing something stupid. And I would say triangle. Nice. So nice. what do you I think? Like you going to agree with me again? I'm going to agree with you that it would be a submission okay. off of Diaz's back. Okay. He's definitely going to get the win there. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking arm bar. I'm thinking Melvin might, you know, knock Diaz off balance. Diaz will fall down. <laughs> and he's going to go in there swinging big punches and get arm barred. I'm, I'm, I'm not giving Melvin more than three minutes. Really? I don't, I don't, he's just a brawler. He just throws big punches, knocks chumps out. And I'm sorry, Diaz is no chump. It's going to take a big shot to drop yeah, him. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. And you know what? A lot of people say three minutes, he's going to last longer than that. But... You're really going by past fights, because yeah. Gallard has done that many times. I mean, Joe Daddy had him within, what, 30 <laughs> seconds, something like that? <laughs> Boom! Right into a guillotine's <laughs> over. Diaz, probably not quite as strong, but one thing I thought about, too, Diaz's weakness, at least what we've seen in the last few fights, has been against big wrestlers. Yeah. Gallard is shorter than him. He's probably beefier than Diaz, but he's like three or four inches shorter, so Diaz has that going for him, and he's just straight-up boxer, striker. Yeah. He's not going to be wrestling with Diaz, so... That is just a bad combination. So, what do you think? I mean, you've heard our, our side. Are you going to give Gallard a little bit of love, or uh, are you just going to side with us? Not really. I'm not <laughs> a big fan of him. But, uh, yeah, most, I mean, what, like six of seven of his losses come from submission. 85%. And wh who's he fighting? One of the best submission guys in lightweight, in my opinion. Yeah. So, I think eventually the fight's going to go to the ground. Not sure how it's going to happen, but I think it will. And I think Diaz is going to submit him. Guys, we are unanimous for both of the events. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. So, hey, you heard it. Submission.
That's it, guys, from Osborne and McCarty again. As always, thank you very much for watching. If we forgot any uh, points or if you disagree with us, show us a little bit of love. Throw some comments down in there and let you know what you think. But guys, that is it. I'm Josh Osborne. Matt McCarty. Jared McCarty. And we will catch you on the flip side.